Hello, everyone. Just uh, recording the intro video for Lab 4. So um, first off, I'd just like to apologize for the delays in posting Lab 4 this week. Uh, it's been a pretty difficult week for me. Uh, experienced some issues. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'm making Lab 4 considerably shorter and more hands off than um, Lab 3, for instance, so uh, it shouldn't take you anywhere near as long to work through it. Uh, so before I get into anything, I just want to give a content warning and say that this lab's dealing with a really difficult and painful subject that might be triggering to some folks, so it's kind of continuing uh, in the vein of what I talked about on Thursday for lecture. So if for any reason you find yourself just unable to engage with this data, uh, please contact me. I can find an alternative way for you to get credit for lab four if this is too difficult to work with. Um, so what I want to show you today is how we can use Python, which is an open source programming language, to do GIS and how you can use Python to uh, advocate uh, for social justice and environmental justice issues. So, um, Python is an open source programming language, which means it's free for anybody to use and download. So uh, you don't need to pay for it. You don't need a license. You don't need to do any of that. You can set it up and install it on yourself, if, all yourself, if you have a computer and an internet connection. So for instance, um, my old computer broke. And one of the issues I've been dealing with this week is trying to get ArcGIS Pro transferred from my old computer to my new computer, given that it's proprietary software and UBC uh, restricts your access to it. I could only have it installed on one system, so I have to go through the whole process of re-downloading and installing it, but also getting permission to be able to do that. Uh, Python, don't need any of that. With a few lines of uh, code, I can just download and install Python on my new system, and it's been set up since the day I got the computer. So open source software is much easier to deal with in some respects. It's also much more accessible and that's why it's an important tool for working towards social justice, because these proprietary software packages are restricted to like expensive institutions. And I'll talk more about that in lecture this coming week. Um, I just want to give some learning outcomes for the lab. So there's just four things that I want to show you. Um, just an introduction to open source JS using Python. There are other open source JS options, which I'll talk about in lecture. And then just an overview of how to geocode. So that's taking uh, addresses and getting coordinates. So uh, how do you turn a text-based address into a coordinate? And then show you an example of how to do vector overlay with Python. So this is something we've already done in Arc Pro, but I'll show you how to do it in Python. And then just make a couple quick web maps. These aren't anything too fancy, just um, some nice little interactive maps that you can use. So again, the objective of this lab is to just investigate um, police involved deaths in BC. So we're gonna work with a data set from June, 2011 to May, 2021. So this data was compiled from multiple sources to build on the data set from the CBC that I presented about on Tuesday. So we're gonna geocode the data to extract location information and determine where these incidents are occurring and then intersect it with census data and normalized by population to determine where the rates of police involved deaths are highest. And so uh, just building off lecture a bit, why am I focusing on police involved deaths? Canadian institutions rely on a lack of race-based information to perpetuate a narrative that police violence and systemic racism are just American issues and that Canada is somehow better but that's patently false. Uh, we need to have discussions about the pervasiveness of these issues in Canada to make uh, part of the public discourse and hold Canadian public and hold Canadian institutions accountable. Um, for myself as a white settler and immigrant to Canada from the United States, I certainly fell for this narrative for many years and didn't question it. Um, and so, I personally feel that this information needs to be much more widely available so that um, it's more commonly accepted and talked about in the public discourse. So just a little bit about the data. Uh, again, as I mentioned in lecture, the CBC has published a couple articles on police violence, but there's numerous issues with it. 
So additionally, there's a handful of other databases. There's one called Killer Cops Canada, another one published by the Georgia Strait, and then there's also a Francophone database. And so I've compiled these data sets, or I'm working on compiling these data sets together, but they are not mutually inclusive. Also, they still miss uh, some records, and so I've been working on compiling all of them. So you're going to work with a subset today that's going to span uh, 2011 to 2021. So just a little bit about Python before you get into anything. Um, Python is a really powerful programming language that's free to download and use. It's really well suited for data analysis and visualization, and it's a great choice for working with geospatial data. So today I'm going to or this lab, I'm going to show you how to access UBC server that already has Python installed on it. You don't need to know any coding for today. I'm going to give you pre-written blocks of code and all you have to do is hit the run button. So um, if you want to install Python on your own computer down the line, I suggest you check out Anaconda. It's um, a scientific programming package that will download pretty much everything you need to work with. And if you do find yourself working with Python, here's some good resources for you to work with down the line. And so the way Python works is it uh, relies on packages, sometimes known as libraries, that are just collections of code that are designed specifically for performing certain tasks, like plotting or statistics or linear algebra or geospatial analysis. So the main uh, packages in this lab are listed here, and I've linked to their um, documentation pages. I'm not going to go into in depth, but I will mention that uh, GeoPandas is just a great library for some uh, geospatial data analysis, and we're going to use GeoPy uh, to do some geocoding. And this is not automatically installed on the Python server, so we have to go ahead and do that, which I will explain in the next video. Uh, geocoding is a really uh, important component of GIS, how do you take coordinates and turn them into locations? And so one of the reasons that I'm showing you how to do this in Python is because ArcGIS Pro has a geocoding service. However, with the student license, you only get 1,000 free geocodes. So that's enough to query 1,000 addresses and then they cut you off and you can't do any more than that. And so I had numerous students last term who wanted to do some geocoding for their final projects. One of the project ideas that I give um, is to uh, work with some city of Vancouver data. And so one of the data sets, for instance, was uh, bike rack locations in the city. And there are more than a thousand records in that data set. And so trying to geocode it, the students ran into issues. So I'm going to show you a very simple way that you can bring it into uh, Python and you could geocode those locations free of charge um, just online yourself. So I'm going to walk you through the whole process. The next three pages of lab each have a video associated with them kind of walking you through. We're going to use this Jupyter notebook to operate uh, some, uh, do some work in Python. 